Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, the majority of our public schools start their fall semesters tomorrow. But our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, decided to go back last Friday. At breakfast, her landlady asked the reason. Why are you going down to school this morning, Connie? Oh, I don't know, Mrs. Davis. There are several reasons, I guess. I like to get my desk in order, see that the blackboards are all clean and ready. Besides, I won't be the only teacher at school this morning. A certain biology laboratory has to be put in shape for the coming term, too. Mm, I see. And there's a certain biology teacher who's going to do the putting in shape. That's right. A certain male biology teacher. Mm-hmm. A certain male biology teacher named Philip Boynton. Whee! <laughs> I might have known. You get a different look when you just start thinking of him. A sort of golden light floods your eyes at the mention of his name. It's like somebody stuck a fork into two poached eggs. <laughs> well, that's a pretty thought. But I am fond of the bashful brute. However, there's something else that's been on my mind lately. I ran into some teachers the other day, and there's a rumor that some changes are going to be made in our faculty. Nonsense, Connie. These silly rumors start flying around before every new term. Why, down at the Ladies' League luncheon the other day, I even heard that Mr. Conklin might be leaving Madison. What? But without Mr. Conklin as our principal, Madison wouldn't be... Well, it just wouldn't be a high school anymore. What would it be? A paradise. <laughs> I mean, who, who told you about his leaving? Oh, nobody told me. It's just some Ladies' League scuttlebutt. <laughs> Well, I guess I'll find out more about the situation at school today. Walter Denton's driving me down this morning. Oh, what's wrong with your car? Oh, I had a little trouble with the drive shaft right yesterday. What happened to it? It fell down an open manhole. <laughs> It was nice of you to pick me up this morning, Walter. It's a labor of love, old fair one. <laughs> Besides, I promised to help Harriet Conklin get things straightened out at school. Oh, is Harriet coming in today, too? Yes, ma'am. I'm picking her up on our way down. She always likes to help old Marblehead, uh, I mean, her dad, get things ready before school officially opens. <laughs> yes, I know, but how come she isn't driving down with him? Oh, their car's in the repair shop. Uh, the bottom of the motor's all ripped up. It seems some idiot left a drive shaft sticking out of an open manhole. <laughs> well, it takes all kinds of drivers to make a world, don't I? <laughs> uh, how has Mr. Conklin been acting lately, Walter? Awful. Even for him. Harriet told me yesterday he's been tense and irritable all week long. That's par for the course, isn't it? What do you suppose he's worried about, though? Oh, you got me. Well, here's the house, Miss Brooks. I'll go up on the porch and get Harriet. You wait right here. All right, Walter. Tell Harriet to hurry. It's almost a quarter after Boynton. A ten. <laughs> Hi, Walter. You timed it just right. Hi, Harriet. Hello, Mrs. Conklin. His old marble... Uh, is Mr. Conklin going along with us? I don't know if he's quite ready yet, Walter. Uh, just a moment, I'll call him. Oh, Osgood, want to ride down to school? Who's driving? Mr. Conklin, me, sir, me, Walter Denton. Me walk. <laughs> it's just as well. Daddy's been in a pretty bad mood lately. The walk will do him good. Okay, let's get started, Harriet. See you later, Mrs. Conklin. Bye, Mother. I'll be back as soon as I help Daddy get Madison organized. All right, dear. Have they gone? Yes, Osgood. Good. There's something I'd like to tell you about, my dear. Something I wouldn't want blabbed all over town. Now, Osgood, that's no way to talk about your own daughter. Harriet never gossips. I was not referring to Harriet. I'm talking about her idiot consort. <laughs> if there ever was a marblehead, it's that boy. 
However, what I wanted you to know is that your husband, Osgood Conklin, principal, may soon be Osgood Conklin, assistant supervisor of schools in this area. No. Well, it's not definite, of course. As a matter of fact, I just read of my predecessor's transfer. But it shouldn't take the board long to pick out his successor. Do you really think you've got a chance, Osgood? Chance? What other principal has a better chance? The job requires tact, charm, diplomacy, and intelligence. <laughs> Do you really think you've got a chance, Osgood? I mean, <laughs> if you are selected... When will you find out about it? Probably within the next few days. That's why I'm going into school today and clean up my office from top to bottom. Never know when the head of the board might drop in. But that suit you've got on, it, it's practically in tatters. Well, what do you expect me to wear around dirty desks and dusty files? My frock coat? Now, if you'll excuse me, my dear, I'll trot along to school. Well, don't walk too fast, dear. Remember what Dr. Frank said. While you're on your diet, you mustn't exercise too strenuously. Dr. Frank. Dr. Frank's fault that I've got to take off all this weight. What do you mean? If he hadn't cleared up my ulcer three years ago, I'd never have gotten so stout. <laughs> oh, well, food isn't everything. Before you go, dear, I'd like to ask a favor. Yes? Lucy Snodgrass phoned a little while ago and told me her washing machine is broken. Naturally, I offered to put her laundry in with ours this afternoon. Uh, that should make our laundry very happy. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do about it? Stretch Snodgrass, Lucy's boy, is coming down to school today to clean up the gym. He'll put the bundle in your office, and I'd like you to bring it home for me. A charming assignment. Well, I'm leaving, Martha. You may kiss me now. Thank you, dear. At ease. <laughs> school. Dear old Madison. Oh, it's just heavenly to see your ivy-covered walls once again. Steady, girl, steady. Oh, school isn't so bad when you just volunteer to come. I'd better get right into Daddy's office and start cleaning up. Oh, what's your hurry, kids? It's a beautiful day. Why don't we sit out here in the sun together and chat for a while, hmm? If you say so, Miss Brooks. Well, good morning, folks. Mr. Boynton. So long, kids. <laughs> Two's company, huh? That goes for us, too, Walter. Come on, you can give me a hand with the closet. Okay, my sweet. Adios, dear teachers. Bye, Walter. Well, Miss Brooks, are you all ready to plunge into another school semester? All I've got to do is hold my nose and jump in. <laughs> How about you, Mr. Boynton? Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I have heard some rather disturbing rumors lately. Rumors? Well, yes, I heard there's going to be some kind of a shake-up in the faculty this term. I hope it doesn't affect any of the teachers I know. Like whom, Mr. Boynton? Well, like uh, Mr. DeWitt or Mr. Norman or Miss Enright. Oh. <laughs> of course, I, I didn't mention the one person whose dismissal would affect me the most. And whose is that? Mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't afford to stay out of work for any length of time. It'd work a considerable hardship on my family. You mean your mother and father? Well, yes. They'd have to send me even more money than they do now. <laughs> but, Mr. Boynton, what makes you so sure you're the one who's going to be fired? Oh, I'm not really sure. It's just that, well, if it were me, I, I wouldn't know quite what to do about it. My goodness, to hear you talk, anyone would think you were some kind of helpless moron instead of a brilliant, handsome, personable, capable scientist. Oh, me? <laughs> yes, you. That's the way you should consider yourself always. What do you suppose would happen if you lost your job here at Madison? Do you think you'd have to pack your clothes in a bindle and become a hobo? Do you think you'd have to shuffle through life like, like this poor tramp coming towards us? Well, no, but I... I should say you wouldn't. Why, you'd... Oh, excuse me, Mr. Boynton. I've just got to give this poor old bum a few cents. Here you are, my good man. Get yourself a bowl of hot soup. Uh, no, thanks. I just had breakfast. <laughs> Please forgive me, sir. I, I didn't recognize you in that old suit. <laughs> I'm wearing it because I have a lot of cleaning up to do today. Oh, of course, sir. Miss Brooks didn't mean to be... She uh... never does. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me. Oh, here you are, Daddy. I found this bundle of laundry in your office. Know anything about it? Uh, yes, yes, Harriet. It belongs to Mrs. Snodgrass. I'm taking it home to your mother this afternoon. 
Now, for heaven's sake, let's get into school and clean out my desk. Yes, Daddy. See you later, folks. All right, Harriet. Did you hear that, Mr. Boynton? He's going in to clean out his desk. And those old clothes he was wearing, taking laundry home to his wife. You know, he must be the one who's been canned. Dismissed. <laughs> well, it seems to add up all right. Oh, poor Mr. Conklin. How could the board do such a thing? All these years as a principal, and suddenly... You know, Mr. Conklin has irritated me on occasion, but if he's actually out of a job, well, it's hard to hate a man when he's down. Now, this may not sound like me, Mr. Boynton, but I'm going to do everything in my power to show Mr. Conklin I'm behind him. What are you going to do, Miss Brooks? I'm going right in and help him clean out that office. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Reader's Digest reports the results of one of the most extensive experiments in dentifrice history. Yes, Reader's Digest reports the very same research which proves brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. And here are additional important facts. Over a two-year period, the Colgate way stopped more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. Yes, the Colgate way of brushing teeth right after eating Stop tooth decay best, better than any other home method of oral hygiene. Even more important, there were no new cavities whatever for more than one out of three who used Colgate's as directed. No other dentifrice, ammoniated or not, has proof of such results. The best results ever reported for a dentifrice of any type. And you should know that Colgate Dental Cream, while not mentioned by name, was the only toothpaste used in the research reported in July Reader's Digest. Yes, Colgate Dental Cream, and only Colgate Dental Cream, was used in this research. So always use Colgate's to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. And when you follow the Colgate way, Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. <laughs> Well, Miss Brooks was practically convinced last Friday that Mr. Conklin had lost his job as principal of Madison High. But knowing what a proud man he is, she refrained from mentioning it and spent the morning getting her classroom in order for the fall semester. About noon, she and Mr. Boynton headed for Marty's malt shop across the street. Tell me, Mr. Boynton, have you confirmed our suspicions about Mr. Conklin's dismissal? Well, no, I haven't. I've been pretty busy getting the lab in shape. We could be wrong, you know. Uh-huh. Well, here's Marty's. Say, isn't that stretch snodgrass behind the soda fountain? Yes, it is. Since when has Madison star athlete become a soda jerk? Why not? He's a natural for the job. <laughs> Let's go in, huh? Right. Ah, hello, Stretch. What's the good word? Hi. <laughs> That's a pretty good word. <laughs> How come you're working here, Stretch? I thought you came down to school to straighten out the gym. Oh, I've done that already. Stretch, I did that. No wonder it looked so neat when I got there. <laughs> oh, I'm just minding this place till Marty gets back. Well, where's Marty? He's out to lunch, but I'll take your order, folks. He's out to lunch? What's wrong with the food he serves here? Please, not while I'm ordering. <laughs> oh, the food here's all right, but Marty likes a change once in a while. He's over at Chasinini's. It's an Italian restaurant. You know, a, a pizza rizza rizzia? <laughs> A pizza rizza rizzia? Yes, ma'am. They fix veal a certain way he likes it. Scalapini? No, they only charge 40 cents a plate. <laughs> we got a veal cutlet blue plate here today that looks good. It comes with mashed potatoes and lima beans and includes dessert and coffee. Well, how much does that cost, Stretch? Well, six bits. Think you'd like that, Miss Brooks? Sounds fine, Stretch. Okay. Well, how about you, Mr. Boynton? Want some? Uh, how much is six bits? 75 cents. I see. Uh, how much is the pork chop blue plate? Well, that's 65. I'll He'll take, take that. that. <laughs> well, bring both the two shakes of a lamb. Good stretch. Now, about Mr. Conklin, Mr. Boynton, if he hasn't lost his job here, I'd feel awfully foolish oh, if quiet, he offered... Oh, quiet, Miss Brooks. Quiet. He just came in. Oh, hello there. Getting a bite of lunch? Oh, well, yes, sir. Why don't you join us, Mr. Conklin, and sit right down here? Oh, stretch. Come on up. Right up, folks. Here's your lunch. Oh, 
Hi, Mr. Conklin. I'm pinch hitting for Marty today. What can I get you? I'll have some cottage cheese, just a small portion, please, about 15 cents worth, and a glass of buttermilk, the five cent glass. Gosh, is that all you're gonna eat? In my present condition, that's all I can afford to eat. Yes, sir. I'll get it for you right away, Mr. Conklin. Hi, everybody. Feeding your assorted faces? <laughs> Oh, hello, Mr. Conklin. Walter Denton. <laughs> There's room at this table, Walter. Okay, I'll just help myself to some chow off this steam table. I'll be right over. Hey, Stretch, what's underneath this gooey-looking black barbecue sauce? Oh, I don't know, Walter. I'll take it. <laughs> if Denton is coming to this table, I'll sit at the farthest possible end of it. Oh, but Mr. Conklin, please, we... Please, please, <clears throat> I have little enough to eat. I might as well try to enjoy it. <laughs> Well, here we are. Uh, guess what's under this sauce? A bowl of noodle soup. No, uh, ribs, spare ribs. Boy, what a dish. Well, mind if I join you folks? I'm gonna eat my lunch now, too. Well, not at all, Stretch. Sit right down <clears throat> here. Well, thanks. First, I'll bring Mr. Conklin his cheese and buttermilk. There. Thank you. Now I'll park me and my hot dogs and sauerkraut and baked beans right over here. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Boynton. We've got to do something about Mr. Conklin. He sounds like he's famished. Oh, maybe we could share some of our lunch with him. Oh, of course. Uh, Mr. Conklin, I've got a tremendous veal cutlet here. Wouldn't you like to taste a piece of it? Uh, no, thank you. Well, how about a nice pork chop, Mr. Conklin? I can't touch them. Walter, ask Mr. Conklin to have some of your spare ribs. I'm sure he likes those. So do I. <laughs> Walter, I can't explain now, but your girlfriend's father is in a very bad way. He can't even afford a square meal. What? Oh, gosh, I didn't know it was that bad. Well, I couldn't stand by and let a dog starve. <laughs> How about a nice spare rib, Prince? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Conklin, want some of my spare ribs, sir? What am I, a disposal? <laughs> No, sir. We, we just believe in share and share alike, especially with our principles. You are our principal, aren't you? Well, as to that... Oh, I... Daddy, can you come over to your office right away? Mr. Stone is on the phone. I'll be right there, Harriet. Tell him to hold on one moment. Right, Daddy. This is the call I've been expecting. Au revoir, my friend. You mean you're leaving, Mr. Conklin? I'll see you all before I go, I'm sure. Remember, everything happens for the best. Well, then it's true. He's being fired. Even Harriet didn't know about this. Oh, we gotta do something. If he's so broke he can't even order a decent lunch, how's he gonna feed his family? Oh, I got an idea. Why don't we do what my mother done? Send laundry over to Mrs. Conklin. She's got a washing machine, and she could charge so much a bundle. Mm, we'll call on all our neighbors. I'm sure they'll be glad to help. And all of us will help Mrs. Conklin and Harriet do the laundry. Ah, uh, that's us. All for one and one for all. In union, there is strength. Old friends are the best friends. Six Semper Super Suds. It's awfully nice of you all to help out like this, but I, I can't help wondering what Mother will think when she gets back from her shopping trip. It'll be a nice surprise for her, Harriet, but we got enough business here to tide Mr. Conklin over for two weeks. Did you rig up the clothesline in the yard, Mr. Barton? I did. I also put some up in the living room. We'll need every inch of space we can get. Stretch is still out getting more bundles. Hmm. I had no idea Daddy was in such dire straits. But with friends like you, nobody could ever consider themselves poor. A friend in need is a friend indeed. Your problem is our problem. If I've said it once, I've said it twice. Six Semper Super Suds. <laughs> So you see, Mr. Conklin, the social duties that go with the position of assistant supervisor are most important. Well, that's why I brought you to my home, Mr. Stone. I, I want you to see for yourself what a charming background for entertaining Mrs. Conklin has furnished. <laughs> uh, under my supervision, of course. Uh, right up these steps, if you please. <clears throat> Let's see now, where's the key? You uh, realize that you'll be called upon to receive city officials as well as many of our most influential PTA members from time to time? Oh, of course, of course, yes. Ah, here we are. Uh, after you. Thank you. 
No, if I... What in the world is this? Sheets and towels hanging everywhere. Is this a laundry room? Laundry room? Where did you ever... How could you... Say, it does look like somebody's laundry. <laughs> it looks like everybody's laundry. <laughs> I, I can't understand this. Let's go into my den and then I'll... I'll Mr. Stone? <laughs> Mr. Sto Where are you, Mr. Stone? <laughs> I'm over here in the underwear department. <laughs> <laughs> Just what is the meaning of this? I, I, I don't know anything about it, Mr. Stone, but I assure you, sir, that oh, I should... Hi, Mr. Conklin. Business is great. Here's four more bundles. Snodgrass? <laughs> but, but, but no time to kibitz with you now. I gotta get some more stuff down the block. Oh, before I go, I'd like to remind you about that bundle my mom sent over. Whatever you do, don't put no starch in my running pants. <laughs> I gotta bend my legs getting over those hurdles, you know. Wait right here, Mr. Stone. I'll get to the bottom of this at once. What the devil's going on here? Oh, shucks. We wanted to surprise you. Surprise me? Shut that contraption off, Boynton. Uh, yes, sir. Now, speak, somebody. And speak quickly. Well, we thought that... Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Miss Brooks, what are you people doing here? Trying to help make both ends meet, Mr. Conklin. What both ends? Your both ends. <laughs> when we found out you were fired, sir, we Fired? That... I'm up for the most important job of my career. And the president of the Board of Education is standing in my living room right now, up to his neck in underwear. <laughs> we only wanted to raise enough money so you could feed your family. Shut up! <laughs> Miss Brooks, while I'm composing myself, I want you to go into that living room and tell Mr. Stone you're completely to blame for this outrage. Me? But how can I? I don't care how. Just do it. <laughs> because if I don't get this promotion, you'll never get me out of your hair. Now, Mark! Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, Mr. Stone. You, Mr. Stone. Who's that? Oh, it's me, sir, Miss Brooks. Where are you? I can't seem to see you. You'd have a better view, sir, if you'd just drop that little flap in front of you. <laughs> I am. Oh, you really must forgive the appearance of Mr. Conklin's living room, Mr. Stone. Why must I? Because it's my fault. You see, my washing machine broke down, and Mrs. Conklin was kind enough to let me rinse out my personal things and hers. Do you expect me to believe that this laundry is all yours? That's what I hope you'll believe. <laughs> but there are 24 bed sheets hanging here. I have twin beds. <laughs> I see. And how do you explain the fact, Miss Brooks? That there are men's pajamas hanging here? Pajamas? Well, I... Uh, I bought them for my hope chest. Sixteen pairs? I got a lot of hope. <laughs> Besides, I like to wear pajamas myself. But these are all different sizes. Well, sometimes I feel smaller than others. <laughs> right now, I could curl up in the cuffs. <laughs> Oh, look, Mr. Stone, there's no use my trying to deceive a clever man like yourself. I'd better tell the truth. Well, it's about time. You see, we thought Mr. Conklin was about to be canned, about to lose his position as principal at Madison, so in order to help out until he got another job, we started this little laundry business in his home. Mm -hmm. And who is we, Miss Brooks? Another teacher and some of the students. You mean that you felt such an intense loyalty for this man that you all rallied around in time of his need? Well, he looked so hungry. Uh... Well, I trust Miss Brooks has cleared this matter up to your complete satisfaction, Mr. Stone. She certainly has, Osgood. As a matter of fact, she's been a great value in helping me to arrive at a decision about our new assistant supervisor. You mean I'm it? No, Osgood, you're out. Any man who commands such respect and admiration from his colleagues is much too valuable just where he is. <laughs> Miss... The stone bag. That's my final word. <laughs> Stay where you are, Principal Conklin. Good day. <laughs> well, Miss Brooks. I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair. Gonna wash that man.
Martin as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumit's magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid, Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier, fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, in spite of his chagrin at losing the promotion, Mr. Conklin must have been genuinely touched by our loyalty because shortly after I arrived at home, Mrs. Davis came in with a package for me. Look, Connie, this present just came for you from our good Conklin. Here, uh, this note came with it. Oh, let's see that. Mm -hmm. It says, Dear Miss Brooks, just a slight token of appreciation for your efforts in my behalf. Let it serve, too, as an admission that I have long underestimated your various capabilities. Hmm. Please accept this package in the spirit in which it is offered and for heaven's sakes, not too much starch in the collars. <laughs> Next week, tune in to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis, with the music of Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crana, Gloria McMillan, Leonard Smith, Virginia Gordon, and Bill Johnstone. <laughs> Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, 36 leading skin specialists prove in tests on 1,285 different women that palm olive soap facials, using nothing but palm olive, brought new complexion beauty to two women out of three. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap. Each time for 60 seconds, massaging palm olive's beauty lather onto your skin. Then rinse and pat dry. So start your palm olive facials today. Remember, doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. If you like mysteries that are as full of chuckles as chills, be sure to hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday over this same network. Don't miss the exciting and laughable adventures of these amateur detectives. Hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday night. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. <laughs> Columbia Broadcasting System.